Okay, we're gonna go over two independent series. First comics, which went uh, out of business in the uh, early 90s. Had two uh, sort of niche series, one called John Sable, the other called Grim Jack. We're gonna go over John Sable first. Um, it was written and drawn by Mike Krell, and who he owned the title. And it was one of uh, the first independent dark superhero series of the 80s. Um, it helped usher in grim and gritty sensibility that came to define this uh, niche, this genre. Um, the, the whole run had 56 issues. It ran from 83 to 88 before being canceled. Um, let's see. The character made some cameos and some other uh, periodicals. And John Sable was a bounty hunter and mercenary who had previously been an athlete in 1973 Munich Games. After witnessing terrorist outages at those games, outrage, outrages at those games, he married a fellow athlete and they re relocated to Rhodesia, where Sable became an organizer for safaris and tourists and later a game warden. It was during this time that his family was murdered by poachers. After avenging his slain family, Sable returned to the United States to become a freelance mason. So that's the story of Sable. We'll go through some books. First issue. First comics went out of business in 91. But they made these niche uh, sort of dark motif. Sort of uh, 007 type of feeling, sort of James Bond feeling to these books. Books themselves um, aren't worth a whole lot of money. Probably two to five dollars a piece. Maybe a bit of a premium if you have uh, near a full run, as I do. It's sort of a macabre type. Pick these up on a Craigslist uh, offering where I got myself a, a short box for about a hundred dollars a couple of years back.
a pretty long run. Sable. Thanks for watching. This comic book narcissist. Comment, like, subscribe. Over and out. Okay, I'm gonna talk about part two. First comics, Grim Jack. Grim Jack is the street name of John Gorn, a sword for hire ex paramilitary war veteran and former child gladiator. He operates from the Mun Munsland Bar in the Pit, a slum area of Cyboshnur, a multi-dimensional city in which all dimensions connect. <laughs> Sounds very psychedelic. Um, issue number one was published by First Comics in 1984 and ran until issue 81 in April of 91, with all stories written by Ostrander and other artists who worked on the series. Following the writers and artists recovering the rights to Grim Jack, the artists teamed up again to publish Grim Track Killer Instinct. <laughs> John Gorn, alias Grimjack, was born in the pit, a slum area of this pan-dimensional city of Cybershore, where both technology, humans, and aliens intermingle. His father married Anya's sister, and they had one child together, Joe, the only one of his brothers whom John cared for and vowed to protect. When John was five years old, Old Nick attacked and killed Jack in a drunken range. He was sentenced to prison, but later escaped. Um, so both these series were published by First Comics, who, um, which went out of business in the early 90s. So we'll go through some of these covers. So these are independents. Unlike Sable, this one's a little bit more sci-fi, as a description noted. They're kind of cool books. Some of the uh, independent artists who made a lot less money than Marvel and DC artists are nearly, if not as talented as those um, primary artists. Independent comics sort of remind me of like, PBS for TV. You never get the, the limelight of the main stations, but nevertheless, there's a lot of high quality material, both in the drama, the writing, the artistry, and um, most 
everything else. But they're just not quite considered mainstream. Like the John Sable line, I got these through a Craigslist offering. They were part of the short box. So, pay a hundred dollars for the for whole thing. Included both these runs and a couple other miscellaneous books. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Over and out.